Hey everybody, welcome back to RPG Imaginings. I thought that I would have a little change of pace here for this video because I have been posting a lot about RuneQuest Glorantha lately, but that doesn't mean that I'm not interested in other role-playing games. And so I've had a lot of pickups for Call of Cthulhu recently, running basically a huge breadth of the time that Call of Cthulhu has existed. I've started to collect vintage supplements as well as the more modern 7th edition. And so what I have here is a stack of Call of Cthulhu products for you that are going to go from the 1980s all the way up through published in this year. Uh, and so I think this will be interesting for you to see. These are supplements that I picked up over the last couple months, but I just haven't featured in a video. And Call of Cthulhu is what I would consider my main game right now. And so I want to make sure that if there's anybody on the channel interested in Call of Cthulhu, you get some content on here as well. I will continue to post videos about RuneQuest Glorantha. I'm going to have a video coming out next that continues the character creation process for RuneQuest role-playing in Glorantha. So look out for that, uh, but I need a little change of pace here uh, so that I can keep things fresh, and so thank you for understanding. So you'll notice that the first one that I have here is just a manila folder. That's because this is an eBay pickup, and what this is is part of a box set for Call of Cthulhu. This is part of the box set for Call of Cthulhu 3rd Edition, and so there are a couple cool components that came for this. I only paid about 20 bucks for this on eBay, and so given that complete box sets can go for over $100 for different editions, Editions, I thought that this was a pretty good find. And so what we have here is the Investigator's Book by Sandy Peterson, which includes character creation rules. It includes some of the basics of occupations, an introduction to uh, role-playing games in general, really. Uh, how to read dice. I mean, this is something that was first published. Let's see if we can get a publication date on this. Uh, this was this one was first published in 1981, and then this is updated to 1983. So this is you know part of role playing history right here. And so I have the investigators book that came with it, a what's in the box sheet that also contains some blank character sheets. And anyone who is familiar with Call of Cthulhu, this is. Not as bare bones as Call of Cthulhu gets, but pretty darn close. Uh, there were not a lot of changes that happened in the early editions of Call of Cthulhu. We have this cardboard character figures cut out that you can do and attach to bases. And so this is something that I can readily photocopy. Uh, if you're in my campaign, you can see that we have some serpent people here that we'll need to be relying upon uh, quite a bit. And so I may end up utilizing these. And then this is really a cool aspect of is the original map that came with it. And this is too big to appear in frame, but it's basically a world map that contains some key locations for Lovecraftian role-playing. And so for right here in Australia, you can see City of the Great Ones marked off as an example. Over here in Africa, we have uh, Chabi, uh, one of the uh, mythos locations, Garne with a question mark. And so there's all sorts of cool things on this map. And this may end up being something that I frame and put on my wall. I haven't quite decided. But uh, in terms of age... This is my most recent pickup that is of the oldest age, okay? I saw Seth Skorkowski's video about uh, one of the scenarios in this supplement, Fearful Passages. And actually, when I saw this video, I didn't know Fearful Passages was a thing because a lot of these older supplements for Call of Cthulhu are very, very difficult to get your hands on without paying a premium price for. And so Fearful Passages was published, I believe, for 5th edition, yep, and this one came out in 1992. Okay, when I was in high school. So this is a pretty old supplement. This is kind of a cool supplement in that each of these scenarios that come in this supplement are associated with a mode of transportation. And so there are rules for flying and diving. Uh, crash dive was the scenario that Seth Skorkowski had recently reviewed. Uh, boats, uh, armored cars, automobiles. And so part of the reason why I got this is because I just like Call of Cthulhu from the aspect of historical information. And I learn a lot from the historical information that is in these supplements. Uh, this adventure in particular, Fear of Flying, has some really interesting mechanics surrounding an airplane, uh, the Tarrant Tabor aerial yacht. 
And so I'm not going to show a lot of these in detail. There's a, there's a dirigible here uh, that's sort of, whoops, I should probably cover that up so that there aren't spoilers here. But uh, obviously, something mythos happens as you're on this uh, adventure. Now, this was a really cool find for me because I saw Seth Skorkowski's video and I ran to eBay to see. Actually, you know what? No, I think I got this one on Noble Knight. Noble Knight had one copy left over for a reasonable price. I think I got this for $37 plus shipping, which for those of you who follow vintage supplements for Call of Cthulhu, that's a really good price for a really good supplement. And so I snagged their last copy right after Seth Skorkowski published his video. And so this was a cool pickup for me. Continuing on, I have a pair that go together. I picked up the Keeper's Companion and the Keeper's Companion 2. These are two supplements that I had my eyes on for quite some time. Uh, the Keeper's Companions, first published in 2000 and 2002 respect respectively, contain a wide variety of information that is really useful for Keepers, especially if you're looking for information on the fly. And so this first supplement starts with an essay by Brian Sammons about general tips for Keepers and for uh, dealing with mood and red herrings and how to wrap up adventures and lots of information on, in this one about various different uh, tomes and different languages. And so if my players in the audience are watching, there's information about Nicole in here and relaying gifts, more information about various books. We have a Yithian, nice picture of a Yithian present here. Uh, and so lots of just general great information. There is some various cults, information on forensics and firearms, specific information about the history of various mythos races, and alternate uses for skills. And so that's Keeper's Companion Volume 1. And then Keeper's Companion Volume 2 just expands on a wide variety of other things. Okay, so pre-Prohibition America, which states were wet and which states were dry in different years, and when did they become uh, dry? So detailed information about the history of Prohibition, how they had spiked alcohol with methanol, which of course is poisonous, and you frequently uh, do not recognize that you've ingested methanol until it's too late. It could take 12 to 24 hours before methanol is in your system. It causes blindness and eventually death, and so that was something where, where people were trying to cut alcohol during Prohibition. They ended up making poisons. Uh, some selected terms information about how to get around the law in prohibition the keepers lists of lists i think this is a cool resource in this second book in that basically this is what adventures had been published up until this point not only in different supplements but with different uh, mythos threats and so if you're interested in running a adventure that contains bass the goddess of cats who is featuring in my campaign right now. Here are places that you can look where you will find information on that particular mythos uh, entity. And then it also, uh, I think later on, breaks up, uh, oh yeah, in what adventures you will find certain texts for players to discover. Uh, there's a whole chapter on guns and lots more details about guns. This is useful information. I was thinking about uh, picking up uh, the investigator's weapons guide uh, put out by 60 stones press uh, but once i realized that this was in the keeper's companion too i was like i'm good i have all the additional information that i need for weapons um more information on text mythos ex machina uh basically uh different gadgets that can be used by various alien races and then a short story here at the end that you can use and so keepers companion volume two okay 2000 and 2002 for these two and i picked these up for around 22 dollars a piece on amazon i think is where i got these uh age of cthulhu starfall over the plateau of lang my players are in the dreamlands right now and so i picked this up specifically because I've sort of been devouring dreamland scenarios. Starfall Over the Plateau of Lang is one of the Age of Cthulhu books put up by Goodman Games, which Goodman Games, of course, is most famous for uh, DCC, Dungeon Crawl Classics. But Age of Cthulhu uh, was a series of supplements that Goodman Games put out over the early 2000s and uh, into the, the teens. And this one particular one is the eighth 
Age of Cthulhu adventure that came out, and this one was published in 2012 for 5th edition. And so it starts in 1920s, Arkansas, I think, and this one delves into Lang and the Plateau of Lang and into the Dreamlands. And so I originally ordered this. It was a... Some nice art there, handouts, really nice handouts in this, in the back of the book. Uh, I originally ordered this as a soft co uh, cover off of eBay, but the seller contacted me and say, said, ooh, yeah, the only thing that I have is the hard cover. I'll just send you that. I'm like, sure, I don't mind getting a hard cover of a, of a nice scenario. And so Age of Cthulhu, Starfall over the Plateau of Lang. I paid bottom dollar for this, I think, about $18, which for a hard cover version of an Age of Cthulhu scenario, that's a pretty good price. Okay, And then last but certainly not least, uh, I've had this for a couple weeks right now, but I really wanted to... Uh, uh, point out to everybody that I received my copy. This was published just this year. Well, it was kickstarted in 2018, and then we've been waiting through 2019 to get it. The Sassoon Files, a source book for the Call of Cthulhu and Gumshoe role playing game. And this is specifically uh, associated with role playing in 1920s China, specifically in and around Shanghai. And so, Sons of Singularity is a, one of the new up and coming small publishers for licensed publishers for Call of Cthulhu. Very excited to see what they're going to do. They ran a great Kickstarter. The story on this one is that they had arranged for these to be printed in China and the Chinese government stepped in and destroyed all the books. Uh, largely, of course, because it has to do with China and Chinese history, and the Chinese government can be very sensitive about those sorts of things. And so we basically had to wait an extra five weeks to have them printed in the United States. I've never been prouder to have a Kickstarter go over time. And so this was a really good Kickstarter. Yeah, it went over time, and it went over time despite the hiccup. But, you know, you can expect most Kickstarters to go over time. The overtime for this was coupled with lots of communication and information about what the progress was for everything. And so this was really just an overall great experience. And this is a thick scenario book, a really high quality scenario book on really high quality paper. And so just to give you a brief little tour here, um, there's an introduction here that just highlights uh, Sun Yat-sen passing away in March of 1925 and how change in power began to affect China and specifically Shanghai. And Victor Sassoon, who is the namesake of the Sassoon Files, was sort of a dilettante and philanthropist that uh, was a European present in Shanghai at that time. And so a lot of the adventure hooks are centered around Victor Sassoon getting the players involved. And so there's this great historical set of ethos, uh, essays here, some mythos hooks, a timeline of China up through Shanghai, a pronunciation guy, which I really appreciate, some thoughts on uh, running Chinese investigators and uh, dealing with racism and colonialism in China at the time, this great map of downtown Shanghai, and some other historical figures that you'd be likely to meet in this book. And then, and I don't want to spoil it for anybody, the whole rest of the book is basically just uh, jam-packed with scenarios. So Strange Gates, Hidden Demons is the first one. The art is great. It's not only commissioned art, but it's pulled from historical sources as well. If you're into Trail of Cthulhu, all of the Trail of Cthulhu stats are in black text and all the Call of Cthulhu stats are in red text. And so this is just a really cool, cool supplement. And uh, there's puzzles and a wide variety of pre-generated characters that you can play that are appropriate for the time. And so this is just one of the coolest new supplements that has come out for Call of Cthulhu. And I really hope that the guys at Sons of Singularity continue to produce products. And I don't care how long it takes them to do it, so long as they are great products. Let's see if we can find me here in the uh, credits because backers are listed here at the back of the book. And there I am. Klexer is my username on uh, the BRP forums and Yogg-Sasoth and uh, Kickstarter. 
So there we go, Sassoon Files, awesome. And so this was published just this year. And so wide variety of supplements to share with you for Call of Cthulhu that I picked up lately. I've been wanting to uh, continue to expand my collection. And these pickups are all examples of books that I've gained over the entire breadth of the time that Call of Cthulhu has been a role-playing game. I'm really into it right now. I have an awesome group. Shout out to my group. Uh, and, uh, you know, you guys are awesome and you've really made this fun for me and I'm happy to share this with everybody in the audience. And so thanks for watching RPG Imaginings. I'm going to have that next character creation video for, uh, RuneQuest role-playing in Glorantha coming out really soon, but I wanted to break in here and get you some Call of Cthulhu goodness before... I pieced out. Um, and so I'll be uh, gone. I'll be on vacation a little bit next week. And so please be patient. Um, the next RuneQuest video will be coming out, you know, in the next couple weeks. But I appreciate you watching. And uh, if you like what you see, go ahead and like and subscribe. And uh, happy gaming to you. Have a great day.